Hi all, let's look at game eight of the Alpha Zero against Stockfish match. So Alpha Zero was white in this game. D4, we have Knight F6, C4, E6. Now Knight F3 sidestepping the Nimzo Indian defense. So Queen's Indian territory. And we have this Bishop B4 check now, Bishop D2, and the Bishop just drops back there. So it's interrupted that D file. This has been seen quite a lot before, this idea, this disruptive check. Knight c3, c6, e4, d5, e5. And now knight e4 is played. White doesn't really want to take on e4 because after d takes, this uh, pawn is quite vulnerable when that knight moves. So that's ignored. White just castles. Now bishop a6, and this looks to be a real nuisance because this fianchetto has just left this diagonal. Is this tapping into a downside of the fianchetto bishop? This diagonal with the the rook as as a, as as a valuable asset there. We get a very very interesting idea now. B3. Now if d takes, then knight takes e4 clearly. So. Knight takes c3 is played first, and then black just wins a pawn. Yeah, this is a full pawn sacrifice, a positional pawn sacrifice. What has it achieved? Well, these pawns are doubled for a start. The e4 square is available to white now. By well, that pawn leaving d5, a knight can reroute to e4, or pieces generally can make use of that nice central square. There's an advanced pawn wedge for white in the center of this e5 pawn. So how significant will this extra pawn be? B5. Now knight d2 just immediately eyeing that e4 square. And the knight goes in there. And you see that this bishop's not going to be very happy in this pawn chain for a while, at least. Bishop b7. White has to watch out for c5 tactically, though, in general. Queen g4 is played. Knight d7. And actually, white just plays now knight c5, just positively inviting simplification to really shut the door on this bishop to kind of trap it in its own pawn structure. Black actually took that knight. And we have d takes. We can see a grip is on a5 here with this bishop on c3. And the infiltration points, although seemingly tempting they might be easily parable uh, let's see what happens in the game a5 a3 a takes a takes a couple of rooks come off and now an infiltration so how is this parried well simply actually rook c1 because what is the follow-up here with this bad bishop yeah black is not really doing much with the invasive queen here she needs a bit more support rook a8 and actually, white is still not too concerned here. h4 is played. And it looks as though, can't black at least use this a file? Queen d8 was played in the game. Let's have a look at rook a3 for a moment. So both aggressive pieces of black being used here. But we have this move to kick the queen out. And now perhaps just queen e2. And there's nothing really for white to be concerned about here. So black didn't bother with rook a3, queen d8. And we have now bishop e4, eyeing the king there, queen c8, king g2, queen c7, and now queen h5, trying to prompt some weaknesses, which can be undermined later. So now there's a target on g6 for h5, which means that an active rook of the h file could be important for an attack. Bishop f8, h5, black is on the defensive and cramped. Rook d8, queen h4 with the threat, maybe being stronger than the execution of hg, just building up with rook h1 first for hg, would force a compromise like fg, leaving this pawn isolated. We have queen e7. Let's see if this queen wasn't challenged here. Say queen d, 
queen queen d7 rook h1 with the threat of hg sometimes queen e7 hg here this is going to be quite nice white's got a small edge there anyway you can see there's no infiltration points for the rook so anyway in the game queen e7 we have queen f6 here not minding the exchange of queens uh yeah they're just the lacks an infiltration point it's amazing that white's just very casual about getting the pieces off a pawn down but it's a really it's a token pawn at the moment and it's really just hemming in that bishop prisoner uh, so queen e8 rook h1 rook d7 is played hg this is starting to look a bit scary so clearly hg it runs into a mate or with the rook so fg which fragments the pawns a little bit there's an extra islands now queen h4 queen e7 queen g4 rook d8 bishop drops back here to reroute actually this is clever because now e5 is not attacked immediately the bishop can consider rerouting along this diagonal queen f7 and it does so bishop c1 now black plays a committal pawn move c3 it's quite dangerous this position by the way if say bishop a8 can you see what white could do here which would blow black off the board if i give you five seconds starting from now so this is not this was not played in the game but what could white do if i give you five seconds to pause the video okay rook takes h7 would be crushing if king takes then check hitting that rook but also actually it's say bishop h6 was played to attack this one then we this is good anyway to just take the bishop there and then take here this is just crushing this position it's an example continuation white has got a huge advantage here so yeah white is kind of putting the pressure on here with rook takes h7 in the air we have um c3 so that's that's where c3 bishop e3 now we have bishop e7 queen drops back bishop f8 and this pawn is just attacked it's rounded up yeah the pawn may have been a, a, a tactical distraction in those lines with rook takes h7 so that's why Perhaps this whole c3 was was played. Uh, queen takes c3. So black's got um, it's now equal on on pawns, and white persists with a space advantage and better quality pieces here. Rook c1, queen c7, bishop g5, hitting the rook, and at f4, h6, the bishop goes into f6, knowing that even. If the pawn is rounded up here, white can infiltrate on the A file. And this is what happens. Takes, takes. The pawn is rounded up. But we have this A file infiltration. Queen takes. White takes and infiltrates. It's very unpleasant, this position. Already winning the pawn back now here. What else? If the bishop drops back, we can take on C6. So taking on g6 getting the pawn back with interest again and the end game advantage is quite large here let's have a look bishop c8 some torture <laughs> the king coming in aggressively this looks like a, a desperate move it's just taken so finally white is a pawn up yeah the king was just going to march to e5 for example and then maybe to d6 Rook comes back. So e5 here. The c6 is taken, so we got now a protected past pawn. Check, check. But uh, this is going to be two past pawns soon after b5 drops. K 
king b6. And now here, actually, king a5. And now this pawn is safely taken. And it's just two connected pass pawns, really. It's a matter of technique. After bishop e2, uh, the operators may have resigned on Stockfish's behalf. Yeah, so we see here an intriguing positional game where this pawn sacrifice kind of hemmed in that bishop on c8 without infiltration points on the d file. White central pawn wedge uh, was very nice and really constituted a very good attacking advantage later when this h pawn, uh, the h pawns were swapped. Black desperately kind of let go of the pawn, and so white had just a very, very good position after that, not even a pawn down. And the advantage really persisted into the end game. So a very, very nice positional win, which I mean, Karpov would be proud of. Hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.